Hello, I'm Dennis with DoItYourselfDennis.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a mortar bed shower pan. Um, first things you want to start out with is you want to start out with a good solid floor. Uh, generally you want it an inch and a quarter thick is what they recommend. So it's three quarter inch and then put some half inch plywood on top of that. And it's not a bad idea to glue it between uh, between coats or between layers um, and then the next thing you're going to do clean it up good and then we're going to put some felt down it's just some 15 pound felt uh, as a vapor barrier and what this is for is to keep the wood from sucking all the moisture out of the out of the uh, mortar so you're just going to kind of you can just kind of rough cut it. Just slide it up. Get it lined up good. And just staple it down. And then what you're going to do is come back and cut the cut the excess off. Can you see that okay? And it doesn't have to be exact. And we'll go over to the other side. You might put a few more staples in it. Then you're just going to continue on. Oh, here, let's go ahead and do this one so we can go over the. You can line it up with, with one of the lines. Of the previous piece. And then for your around your drain, you're just going to cut around it. And just kind of feel it. Staple. But anyways, you get the idea. Go ahead and uh, put your last piece in, and then we'll get started with putting the lath down. <clears throat> okay, next we're going to put our metal lath down, and this is what metal lath is. Um, so we're going to get a measurement. And we're going to cut it at 88 inches. So come with me, and I'll show you how to cut the lath. Okay, in order to cut this, this metal lath, um, what I do, it's kind of hard to draw a line across it. So I just set my tape measure on there. We're going to cut this at 88 inches. So I just set my tape measure on there and then I just kind of start cutting at it, pointing towards the 88. The way this stuff is made, it's kind of got a wave to it. So it's not like you're, it's hard to see a straight line. So. I just cut it, cut up to my tape measure. And I just kind of eyeball it. Just be careful not to touch your tape measure. And 
it doesn't have to be exact just just pretty close so that's how I cut my my metal lath I use a good pair of tin snips all right we've got our metal lath cut so we've brought it in you gotta be kind of careful with the edges are kind of sharp and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out about a half inch around the drain so I've already got it started you're just gonna go on around the drain And that's all there is to that. And now you're just going to staple it down. You're going to probably want to use at least 3 8 inch long staples. You're going to staple all along the edge about every 6 or 8 inches or so. You can't staple it too much. So let me go ahead and get this finished stapling and put the next piece in. And then we're ready to uh, get ready for the, uh, the mortar. All right, we've got all our metal lath in now. Um, and something I want to point out, you can take a felt tip marker and mark your line. Um, it'll chew up a felt tip marker pretty quick, though. Um, but you can use one. Something else I want to point out is a lot of people, or some people will tell you to put blocks inside here, like a 2x10 blocking in here. And I'll show you why I don't do that. Um, the reason is I like to tuck my corner back into here rather than it being tucked on that because it makes you a big clump. So if you can tuck it back in here, you can hide it. I'll get rid of that hump. Um, so what I do, um, some people will tell you to make a line around the bottom. And what, what, well, what you're going to do is you're going to measure your longest distance from your drain. And for every foot you're going to uh, add a quarter of an inch so this is about four feet so we're going to add about an inch of drop so so what i do is i i rip me some boards to give me a guide instead of drawing lines on here i rip me a board and i i take into consideration the thickness of the uh the lip of the drain and then then I, I start out there and then I add my quarter of an inch per foot so I added about an inch to this and I just lay them out on the on the uh, on top of the metal and I'm gonna go ahead and put screws in and hold them still because uh, you're gonna take this all out it's not staying so we're just gonna temporarily screw it in there just just to kind of hold it still they can wait and I put like in this I'll put three of them out and then then I'll put one over on the side here can you see the one down here I'm just gonna run a screw in there and you'll want to get you either some straight edge uh, or some some screed boards cut them to different lengths or I've got a four foot level that I can use to make sure we're level all the way down or not level but on the same plane all the way down and then I've got a 30 inch and that'll help me back here um, so let me get these finished place down and then we're ready to mix our mortar okay a couple of things I did forgot to mention about cutting these boards or one thing I forgot to mention um, if, if say it's an inch down here or an inch and a quarter what it was you're going to make these short pieces are going to be an inch and a quarter also can you see that okay um, these are going to be an inch and a quarter start out there and end with the same down here I think it was an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch so that gives you the same plane all the way around from from the edge no matter which distance you're from so I just wanted to kind of point that out 
Something else I like to do is I like to cover my my drain hole. You can either take a rag and put it in there, but it seems like you stick a rag in there when you pull the rag out. If there's anything in there, it falls down in there anyways. So I like to take some duct tape and put it over it. And that'll keep the that'll keep the stuff from falling down into the mortar if you drop any down in there. So, um, so let's go to the other room and we'll mix up the mix up the mortar. And uh, as far as well, I'll tell you about that when we get there. So I'll meet you in there. Okay, we're ready to mix up our mortar. Um, a couple things about the mortar to kind of get an idea of a gauge as to how much you need uh, for an inch and a quarter thick. It takes about 12 pounds per square foot. So what I did in there was where it comes down to an, you know, at an angle, because it's not a solid inch and a quarter thick throughout. I got my square footage and I divided it by half. So according to that, I should need, I think it was 130 pounds or no, 156 pounds, something like that. So I've got three bags of uh, quick reap mortar. Um, it's, it's sand and Portland cement mixed together and then you add water. Um, so, and according to the bag, it takes a gallon of water per 60 pounds. But we want to mix this kind of dry. We don't want it, we want, don't want it gooey or squishy. Um, and I'll kind of show you when I, uh, uh, after I get it mixed up. Um, so I'm just going to add a half a gallon of water to start out with. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in my, my tub. And you might want to get a pair of gloves. I'm going to put a pair of gloves on here in a minute. And open your bag. You might even want a, a dust mask. because it, it creates a little bit of dust. Trying to be a little careful because we're inside. And I don't want to mix, you know, put too much dust out. Watch, just got done dusting the furniture because of the drywall we finished. So, you're going to get you a hoe and you're just going to kind of slowly move the mortar around, get the water mixed in. Okay, so um, let me get me some more water and uh, we're going to add just a little bit more. Don't wanna add, you want to add just a little bit at a time because you can't take it away. You can add more, but you can't take it away. So let me go get me a little bit more water and then I'll be back with you when I get it mixed up good. Okay, when you're getting to the to where you're about, you need it, you just... Just kind of mix it around until you don't see any more of the dry mortar. And you can tell it's, it's pretty dry. Um, what you want to do is you pick it up and make a ball out of it. You know, it kind of sticks together. You know, you can pack it. You know, make a ball out of it. So, we're ready to uh, start putting it in. So, I'll meet you in the shower. All right, so now we're just going to start packing it in. I'm just going to pick it up, drop some in there. Just going to pack it down.
so we're going to take our level. Just going to make sure you're going to fit in spots that are low. And then you're going to fill up the rest of the voids. And once I get all the rest of the voids filled in, then I'll show you how we finish it out. Okay, I wanted to show you how I did this part over here. When you come down, when you're kind of screeding it a little bit, you want to follow this board. You don't want to go up in here. You want to just kind of follow that board and look to see how, how flat you are up here. Kind of, you know, we're a little low right there. So we're going to add a little bit more. Take your float and kind of flatten it out a little bit. That's basically how you do that. And once I get the other side done, then we're going to take these boards out. Then we'll fill that void in there. So let me get that done, and then we'll I'll be back with you. Okay, so now we're going to screed this, this section. And when you screed it, you want to make sure you stay straight across. Okay, so now, now we're ready to do that section, now we're ready to do this section. So um, after I get done doing that, I'll take the boards out and I'll show you how we finish that out. Alright, so now we're ready to take the strips out. I've just got them screwed in. careful taking these out just kind of take them out nice and slow
Okay, so now we're just going to fill those voids in. Just take your mud and drop it down inside there. Or your mortar, get your mud. Kind of like mud. And just push it down in there. Take your the trowel and kind of scrape it a little bit. It's not going to be perfectly even, but it's going to be pretty. It'll be close enough for what we're doing. Okay, so now you're going to take your, your wooden trowel and you're going to go over the whole thing. And you're just going to smooth it out. A little low spot there. You see the little low spot? Put you some mud in. Sure it's nice and even around the drain and you can take your levels or your uh, straight edge and just check it in a couple spots make sure it looks looks good too long for that just make sure it's all pretty straight looks real good so let me check this over. Yeah, you can check it that way yeah it looks pretty good so that's all there is to that portion of it now I'll do the other half um, and I'll just use my boards again so 
Now you got the idea how to do that. And the next will be doing the putting the um, rubber membrane in. And we'll get to that tomorrow. You'll want this to set up for at least 24 hours. Okay, this is the rubber membrane that we're going to use for our shower pan. And there's a couple of things that you got to keep in mind. You need to go eight inches up the wall all the way around. So on every side, you need it to be eight inches bigger than what the actual shower is, the shower pan. So this shower pan is 43 inches. So a five foot piece would have been plenty, but uh, the supplier that I happened to get this from, all well, they had was a six foot piece. So it's six foot wide. So I measured out my five feet, which is here. And then you can, if you want, um, you can draw some dotted lines maybe just to show where uh, where it's, you know, so you make sure you've got the right width. Because um, this is 43 inches, I've got eight inches over there, actually eight and a half, and then 43 inches in between, and then another eight and a half. So, and you're gonna wanna allow a little extra for your curb. So, um, this is actually gonna go up and kind of make an L. So, I don't know that you can see it or not. I'm going to cut it across right through here. Can you see that? Can you see that there? Okay. Um, I'm going to cut it across there, and that's where my curb's going to be. Um, when you lay this membrane down, you're going to want to lay it down and, and let it sit for a little while. You know, on a flat surface, nice and clean. Uh, you don't want to make sure you don't poke anything through it. Um, so it's got to be nice and clean and and no nothing sticking up. So we're going to go ahead and cut this off. You can use a straight edge. Kind of makes it help you a little bit to cut a straight line. Not a whole lot to cutting it. Should pretty well get it. And we can use this extra little piece here for our to go around our drain. We'll cut a little extra piece just for a little extra reinforcement. So let me go into the other where the shower pan is, and we'll get it laid out in there. All right. So. What we want to do first, because there's going to be you're going to be putting metal lath into the uh, the second bed, um, so don't put your shower pan in or your liner in yet. Go ahead and put your metal lath in and get your drain cut out. Remember to cut it about a half an inch too short, or a half an inch around, all the way around it. But you can do that and then also you're going to remember your board's going to come down so uh, and you're going to put the board on before you put the mortar in so you want to cut your piece of lath a little bit short uh, that board is a half inch or just under a half an inch so cut this at least I usually cut about an inch and a half two inches too short um, so inch and a half will be great and uh, and just go ahead and lay it in here just make sure it fits right and then of course there'll be another piece right here but go ahead and do that before you get your pan and uh, here in just a minute we'll get the pan oh something else you can do that reinforcement piece you're going to want to go two inches bigger than what your drain is so you can go ahead and cut a circle uh, you know measure your drain and it's about six inches so make it two on each side so that's going to be 10 inches around just cut a, a round piece about 10 inches and then measure you know get some measurements and then you're going to glue it to your pan liner before you put it in here so um, let me go ahead and finish getting this cut out and then we'll 
get our reinforcement piece for around the drain and we'll get that put on. All right, something else you're gonna to wanna to do before you put your liner in is uh, uh, form your form around your curb. So what you do is you, you're gonna get a piece of lath and you'll measure from the bottom up and over and then you measure from here to here over and then back down and um, you're going to just form it around it and then of course your width uh, but remember you're going to have board coming down before you actually put this in so take that into consideration too we're going to use quarter inch board on this inside this wall so keep that in mind too and you can just set it on there and the reason you don't do this when you're when you're uh, when you've got your liner in there is because you're liable to poke a hole through it this stuff is pretty sharp so just kind of form it around it and so it's going to sit like that and then you're going to you might pull it out just a, I mean just a slight bit to take up for your you know, your liner is going to be underneath there so then you're going to bend this side down next And bend it all the way across so it comes out and just form it up kind of like that so then your curb sits there and you're not gonna when you get it actually put on there you're not gonna uh, staple it on the inside you're gonna staple it on the outside so that's basically all you do to that and now it's ready to go so let's get our liner and we're ready to put it in all right so we're gonna we we measured our center of our drain you're gonna measure on two walls you're gonna measure it on well two perpendicular walls uh, you're gonna measure 44 and it's 44 and a quarter so we've got 44 and a quarter and then we're gonna take five inches away or add five inches whichever I'll just add so 44 and a quarter plus 5 is going to be 49 and a quarter we're going to make a mark there then we're going to measure the other way and it was 15 and a half, 21 and a half. or 21 and a half okay, but 21 and a half okay so and then again we're going to measure add our 5 inches for our patch so or half of our patch. So 21 be 26 and a half. Make sure over to here. And then we just so happen to have a 10 inch plate. So we're going to take this plate and lay it on there, line it up on those outside lines, and draw us a circle. So now we've got where we're going to put our pad. So then we've got our piece over here. And again, we're just going to take our plate and lay it on there and take our knife and just kind of be careful about it. And cut our circle. circle and what you're going to want to do is wipe off the back of it and this glue here is uh, shower pan liner glue and you're just going to kind of clean it off make sure we're clean over here and you're going to put a little coat on each each piece put a thin coat on each You don't want it to puddle. You want it to be good and even all the way around. Right. 
and then you're going to scoop this side, and you're going to want to go past your you know, the circle you drew just a little bit, just to make sure you get it all. Man, that's a strong stuff film. Oop. Okay. Now you're gonna let that sit um, for one to three minutes. If it's very cold out, uh, just read the directions on the can. If it's or if it's very warm out, it's one to three minutes. If it's uh, very cold out, you're gonna want to wait. It's four to six minutes, I believe. So we're gonna give that a minute to set up and then we'll come back and glue it on there okay we're ready to put our patch on or our uh, reinforcement just kind of line it up on the circle and lay it down smooth it out and then you're going to take something flat and lay it on top of it and you're just going to stand on it or put some weight on it for 15 to 30 seconds. So start counting. But you get the idea. So go ahead and uh, after this is dry, then we'll be ready to. After this is dry, we'll be ready to put our liner in and. I'll see you in there in just a minute. Okay, we've carried our membrane in here, and the way I carried it in here, what I did was I folded it up on the dotted lines that I'd made, and folded up in for in, and then on the sides. Um, something you're going to want to make sure you do is vacuum, uh, clean this floor real good. Your 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 first layer of pan. Uh, you want to make sure it's nice and clean. And then you can just bring it in and, and just unfold it. And it should be fairly close. It's not going to be exact, but it should be fairly close to where you wanted it to be anyways. And you can adjust it. I can see we're not all the way over in our corner. You can just pull it over until you get over. want to kind of check it a little bit and just kind of slide it over some and it should be I don't know if you can see it or not see where my you can see my line here that I made to where I'm pointing it at just about in the corner. Same down here. I mean, it can go that way just about a quarter of an inch or so. So we'll go ahead and pull it down. Okay. And check it again. We're just about right in the corner. So then you can. Kind of feel your little screws that are sticking up at your drain. And it looks like it's centered pretty well. So what you're going to do next, and this is, we're going to fold this plastic up because I want this plastic to go down over top of this like that. So I'm just going to kind of fold it up. But this kind of shows, let me, probably easier for you to see over here. Uh, this is the reason I don't like to put blocking in. So I can take this corner and you put it up in the corner. And you fold it. But you put the corner back inside the wall. It 
gets it out of the gets it out of your way if you if you don't do that and you have this corner out here you form your form your corner there and of course this is going to be up but then you got this big hump so if you had a board back there you got this big hump you got to deal with when you're uh, you know you want it flat so that's why I like to put my corner back inside the wall so what you're going to do is just line it up check it down here just to make sure everything looks okay everything looks good there and I'm going to I'm going to put a staple in or a nail in right here to hold it and then well, I'll just work my way all the way around. Let me go ahead and get a staple in that. But you'll want it to, you'll want to, yeah, you need to pull your plastic out. Make sure it's down in the corner good. And you want to staple up close to the edge of it and then you're going to work your corner back inside there and again make sure your corner's good or you're you know at the bottom there and put you another staple in you going to work this one in plastic good thing I got her huh and again you're going to Put a staple in. See that way your plastic comes back over it. If there's any moisture to get behind there, it would fall down inside here. So that's why we do that. So let me go ahead and get this finished. I think you probably should get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm going to fold this back into there. And if moisture gets back in there, it's not going to go anywhere because that that corner is up inside here, so it's going to just still go back down in here. So. So we're good there. We're good in the corner. So you get the idea. Just work yourself around. Pull it up tight to it. Put a staple in it. Or you can put a roofing nail. Either or. Um, and then once we get this all set in here, then we'll bring our board down. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, next we're going to cut out for the drain. So what you're going to do is you got to be real careful with this. Uh, probably help to have them make sure your knife's good and sharp. And you're just going to kind of feel. You can press down and see where the screws are. And you just cut you an X on top of that screw. I don't think I went through on the first one. And you're going to work it. Work your screw out of there. And you can pull the screw out. It's not a bad idea to go ahead and loosen these up a little bit prior to doing this. And then you cut let's go to the next one. Just be careful, just take your time. Just go all around and do the rest of them. Uh, let me go ahead and get these, and then we'll, I'll show you putting the drain on. Okay, now that we've got all the bolts through, um, what you're going to do is you're going to cut the center piece out. But you don't want to cut too much of it out. Just hold back a little, you know, a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. And just work your way around it. You can kind of feel the where the edge is. Better to cut too little than too much, so you can always come back and cut more out. 
You don't want it to fall down in your drain, though. You should be able to just push this on and then turn it. Well, maybe. Let me uh, loosen these screws up just a tad. thought they were there you go so then once you've got that on there then you're going to tighten the screws back up wrench down your drain that wouldn't be good I often wonder why they don't put washers on these just seems like it'd be better if there was a washer on there all right so that's that so that's all there is to uh, getting the drain ready. So next we're going to be uh, putting the board on. And once I get a piece cut, I'll show you how we do that. First, cutting out for the curb. Um, they have curb things that you can buy to put on here. That It's kind of like a reinforcement. Um, I personally don't see any real reason for it. Because, I mean, if your water gets up past here, what's that going to do for you? So what I do is I just go down to the corner, I just kind of feel it, cut my piece, and then do the same thing on the opposite side. And then fold it down. And then I, I staple it on, on the outside. I just try to kind of pull it tight. this around staple it and you can do the same thing with your plastic plastics were not all that important right there so that's about that for that and next we're ready to put our board on all right the best way I know to cut this uh, hardy backer board or the concrete board uh, is using a skill saw and then using a carbide tipped or a diamond blade, a masonry blade. Um, you can cut the quarter inch by the score and, and break method, but this half inch, uh, it just doesn't, just doesn't cut like that or just doesn't break very well, especially if you're just breaking off a small piece, you don't have any leverage. Um, so. Um, if you use a, if you do it this way, you'll want to spray your saw off after with an air compressor or some some kind of compressed air, blow it out because it's going to create a lot of dust. Along with that dust, you're you probably want to wear. You're going to want to do this outside. You don't want to do it inside at all, uh, but you'll want to do it outside. And if you've got the wind, any kind of wind blowing, you're going to want the wind to your back so it blows the dust away from you. You're going to want to have a dust mask and some safety goggles. So let me get my mask and goggles on. And we'll go ahead and cut this piece. Uh, just cut it just like you're cutting plywood, but using a masonry blade.
So that's pretty much all there is to cutting this stuff. Um, like I said earlier, the round, a round hole, uh, you'll want to drill it and you can cut it with a jigsaw. Um, I sometimes cut it, they make a masonry blade just for um, jigsaws and cutting this stuff. So you can use that. Um, I did use just a regular wood bit. It seemed to cut it pretty, pretty well. Um, but that's about all there is to cutting it. Okay, to drill a hole into through this uh, hardy backer board, um, I'll just use a spade bit, a wood spade bit. Uh, they seem to work pretty good. I'm gonna get my mark and then just drill it. Oops. That's about all there is to it. So that's how you drill a hole into it. Okay, we've got our first piece and something I want to tell you, um, you want to be about a quarter of an inch off the, off the uh, liner or the membrane. Um, so go ahead and cut you some quarter inch shims and put them in here. That way when you bring it in, you can lay your concrete board on it and you're not laying it on the, on the membrane itself, uh, taking a chance on puncturing it. So you're going to want to just kind of hold it up in there and I always start mine with a nail. I'll just find it easier that way than trying to screw it. Find your stud. It's not a bad idea to mark, mark your studs on the floor. I didn't do it but that's a good idea too. Okay, when you nail down here, you don't want to nail any lower than eight inches or say seven inches. Your, your liner is coming up the wall eight inches, so if say you made a mark at seven inches, So you make you a couple of them. So you know not to nail any lower than that. And I think we've got right here. You just want to be careful laying your hammer down, stuff like that. Just be careful that you don't puncture your liner. Membrane. Okay. So then you're just going to finish nailing it, and again, you're going to put, I put nails and screws. Um, and something I've found as far as putting your screws in is I'll pre drill a, a 3 16 inch, I got a concrete bit, and I'll dr pre drill the holes, and it seems to pull it up good and tight that way. Um, I was finding, especially when I did the edge, that if I just put my screw in, didn't have it nailed first, put my screw in, it would lift it off the 2x4. So I started pre-drilling my holes. So I'll go ahead and get this finished nailed, and then, uh, and you're just going to do this all the way around. You know, use your shims, hold it up, and uh, just work your way all the way around the room or around the shower. And when I get done, then we'll be ready to pour the, the next phase of the pan. Okay, what we're going to do next is do our curb. And uh, what we're going to do is that <coughs> we've got our membrane wrapped around there like we had. And you're going to take your um, metal lath that we preformed before and put it on it. Something I want to point out is I ended up cutting off a little bit of this edge because it was sticking down in there too far. You don't want it to go down into the, uh, the membrane. So you want it to be just above where it curves. You just want to set it on there very carefully so you don't puncture the, uh, the membrane. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to get a piece of one by or I used a piece of OSB three quarter inch and ripped it to size. And you're going to make it the same thickness as the wall. 
So, and I make mine just a hair too big so that I can put it down in there and it's, it's snug fit. So I don't have to nail it or anything. And it'll stay. And so, we're going to put that in there. We're going to snug it down. And then you can see, use the side of your uh, trowel to make sure it's even with the wall. I'm going to check it on both sides. Make sure it's even. It looks good. And you can take a level. Check see how level it is. We're pretty good there. You might take a little torpedo level and make sure you're pretty flat there, pretty level. It doesn't have to be exact because you're going to take some of that out later um, if it's not. Then we're going to staple this side. So put a few staples in it. Okay. And then you're going to mix up your mortar. And you're going to mix the mortar up just a little wetter than what you had the pan. Um, not much wetter, but a little wetter. It'll, it'll form into a little, a little better. So you just push it in the, into the space. And you're going to work yourself. with it. You're just going to want to mix up enough mud to, to do both sides. Mortar, mud, use the drywall. Okay, so when you get it kind of set where you want it, a little low right there, I think. You can take your trowel and you're going to sit your edge flat on the floor and just work your way across. Make sure it's sure it's even kind of using your trowel as a as a uh, screed and you can see the spots where you're a little low yeah just a little bit more to it sorry Cross it again. And just smooth it out.
So that's about it for, for doing that. So now, now you're going to do the other side and then you're going to let it dry uh, for 24 hours at least and uh, then we'll take this board will just pull out of there. And then, then we'll do the rest of the pan. So uh, I'll go ahead and do the other side. You won't be able to see what I'm doing. So uh, there's not enough room in there to videotape it. So um, I'll be back with you as soon as we do the rest of the pan. All right, we're ready to put our second coat of shower pan mud on. And <clears throat> what you're going to need to do is measure up an inch and a half to get you a line to go by. So uh, the way I do mine, instead of putting an inch and a half mark on there and then trying to level it and uh, seeing underneath it, it's, it's pretty difficult to do. So what I do is I measure the width of my level. And it's going to be about two and an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to add that two and an eighth to my inch and a half for my thickness, which gives me three and five eighths. And I'm going to mark up on the wall three and five eighths of an inch. So we'll make a mark. And then you're going to get a level line going across. You're going to level it up. And you're going to make a mark down here and mark back down where you started out with. And then you're going to go underneath. And just put your pencil at an angle so it's up against the level and draw your line. Now you've got your inch and a half line. So you can check it, it's pretty good. Um, so then uh, you're just going to go all the way around the shower doing that. Then the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to put your shower drain in. And what you want to do is you're going to screw it down until you have an inch and a half from here to the bottom. You don't want to go to the top because you've got to allow for your tile So you come to the bottom lip of your drain. And then you're going to measure, I'm probably just going to measure an inch and three eighths because this uh, flange on here is probably about an eighth of an inch thick. So we're going to screw it down until I get my inch and three eighths, a little more. Just a little more. Okay, we got about an inch and three eighths there. So that give us, should give us our thickness and you can kind of square it up to the wall. This is a square drain. So we've got 18 and three quarters there, 18 and three quarters there. Just to make it kind of look nice and square. And so now we're ready to, once we get our line drawn all the way around, once we get our line all, drawn all the way around, we're ready to start pouring our mud, our, our uh, mortar. So let me finish drawing my line and then we'll mix up some mortar. Okay, let me show you. Um, I didn't show you how you, the reason I drew that extra, that top line is so that you have something to go with on the next one. So then you just line it up with it. And again, you're gonna draw a line at the other end. Draw your now you've got your line. Then you're going to go all the way around with it. So that's how you do that. All right, we've got our first tub of mortar mixed up, and again, you're going to want to mix it. The you make it kind of dry. You should be able to pack it together like that, if you can see me. Um, and then something else you're going to want to keep in mind, these little weep holes that are in here, 
you need to take either get some gravel I usually just use gravel and you're gonna put that around them so you don't clog it up with the your mortar you can also use you know take some of these your spacers for your tile you can take some of them and spread it around it uh, just to kind of keep it out so we're ready to what you're going to do is you're going to you're only going to go up half the height on your first coat here um, and we're going to get the half all the way around then we're going to put our screen in our metal lath in and uh, so let's start doing that I'm just going to take this whole tub and dump it my tub's about falling apart what you're going to do is you're just going to spread it out You're only going to go about half the thickness. Okay, so you're just going to continue on. I've got to mix some more mortar. So uh, I'll get it put in here, and then I'll show you before we put our screen in. Okay, um, I just wanted to kind of show you how you, you smooth it out. You can take another trowel so that you have something to balance yourself with. You just work it down into it. Just go all the way around it. You gotta pack it in there good. And you can pack it, you know, hit it. That's how you kind of get it down. And then you can take a level and just kind of make sure you're that you don't have too many, you know, too deep of a valley or you know, you can check it in spots, make sure you're you're still can you see that? Yeah, you don't have any real valleys underneath it. I could probably take a little bit off right here, but it'll be okay. Because uh, by the time we get done filling it in. But that's basically how you do that. So we're going to work our way around it. And then we'll put our screen in. It's always nice to have a, a metal trowel too. Um, something you can use it for that you can't use the wooden trowel for very well. Is to shave it down. You can, you know, shave it down like that so that you, like, there was a little hump there. So you can kind of shave it down. And you're back over it with your wooden float, your wood trowel. But I, I just wanted to show you that. All right, we are ready to put our metal lath in now. So let me grab that and we'll lay it in there. Center it up, and now we're ready to put our next layer on. You can take a piece of plywood 
and lay it on top of here. Kind of give you a little bit. Of... That's gonna be near enough. So uh, before I spread that out, let me get another tub mixed up, and uh, I'll show you how to spread that out. All right, we've got our uh, a pretty good tub of mud on there, mortar. So now we're going to just push it into the where we want it to be. Work it in there. Spread it around. See how close we are to our where we want to be. See, it's got a hump in it. See how it's kind of rocks there. So we're going to take some of that down. Or we're going to do that. Can you see me? Over here. Let's do it over here. Let's try it over here. Make sure over here ain't too bad. But just needs a little bit. I'll just drag it down. Too far off there. Drag this down some. Check it. 
doing that. See a little high there. Take a little bit off there. check make sure you're still got your drop that you had before almost long ways to stretch. You just gotta kinda work it until it's good good and level with your line on the low back. Couple of low spots. There's one there, there. there. You just got to kind of work with it. Okay, so now we want to go back over it with our level just to get one final look at it. Make sure we're good. I mean, it's got a little bitty low spot up there at the top. A low spot there too. Out by the some more. 
see who we are here. You gotta remember you want to be below your the top of that flange to the bottom of it. That's what you want. Actually you scrape a little bit off right there. You see where I made my mark there? There needs to be scraped off just a little bit. All right, we're gonna check it one more time. See how we're doing. Pretty good there. Take it here. Yeah, we're pretty good there. You're not gonna get it perfect. That's just the nature of the beast. You just don't want some real deep valleys. We're pretty good there too. Yeah, we're pretty good there. All right, so then you you just finish out the rest of it doing that same thing. Just got to smooth it out, and uh, that's about all there is to it. So, all right, so now we're we're finishing up now, and you're gonna still use your level. As you can tell, there's just a low spot right there, so I'm gonna. I got me a little pile here. A low spot there. But you're just gonna have to work the low spots out. And I said, like I said, you take a piece of plywood to sit on. Um, it kind of it's gonna spread the weight out. Uh, so that's what you want to do. Is you want to put a piece of plywood out and just check everywhere. Uh, and just smooth it out. And once you get it smoothed out, you're going to check it again. Uh, there's a couple other things I want to point out. As far as your curb goes, um, I left the wood on there just to kind of protect it. Um, but what I'll do is I'll lift that off. And the way you pour that is you don't do it until you do your tile. And what you'll do is the outside piece uh you'll make go five eighths of an inch above the surface and on the inside a half inch above the surface so that way it gives a little bit of an incline so that the water drains back into the shower um, that's about all there is to that uh, make sure your drain straight um, you know um, other than that that's that's about it just finishing up getting the little low spots 
Okay, I wanted to show you the finished product. <clears throat> um, just take a look at it. That's what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Um, I hope this is of help to anybody trying to do this project on their own. It can be a little labor intensive, but it's it's well worth it. Uh, it's a good learning project. Thanks for watching.